Recording. You know, sometimes I wonder why uh, I I start an episode and it doesn't really start. Remember when I've talked about that? Hey, everybody, this is Michael Palsack. Welcome to I Just Got My Kid to Sleep. My name is Michael Palsack, and I am a comedian podcast host, and I just got my kid to sleep. It's Monday, and it's before midnight. What? Well, not in the time zone that we're in. But I count it. We count it. Michael, is it before midnight kind of a low bar? <sighs> Don't talk to me about my bars, world, okay? Worry about your own bars, okay? We're over a bar. We went. We're a, it's, it's a challenge. It can be a challenge. That's what I'm telling myself, that in the summer, in after after the equinox especially, if you're looking at your calendar, it can be a because the kids they see the light, right? Not the uh, walk towards the light. Really, is that really a thing? Or if you die, do you really see a light? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like if I'm about to die and I see a light and they're like walk towards the light, I'm like you come get me, ma'am, sir, whoever. I'm I'm not walking. I'm dead. So this is. I'm happy staying here. I'll DoorDash the light. You send me the light. I would also like a large soft drink. I don't know. I don't people think people DoorDash that. Anyway. Anyway. I'm singing the stall so I remember. Oh, yeah. The solar equinox. The solar. <laughs> the equi- I think I was thinking of solar eclipse. Whatever it is when the days the days are long. And so when you tell your kid like, hey, we're going to eat dinner now. And they look outside like, well, it's not. It's not dark yet. First off, child, who I love more than anything in the world, darkness does not equal dinner, okay? Uh, darkness equals bedtime. So we should be eating dinner before bed. Like I, like from what I've heard, four hours before, if you're on the Oprah style, I've heard her say that. I don't, I eat before, like, I almost eat as I'm falling. That's how close my meals are to bed. You know how they have the, um, What's it called? Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. Today on the podcast, we are enunciating intermittent fasting um, where you only eat like, you know, 20 out of 24 hours. Is that what it is? (laughs) No. 10 hours or eight hours. It's either. I think eight is like hardcore. Ten is normal Um, because you're up for 14 hours. No, you're up for. If you get eight hours, so 16 plus eight equals 24, right? So you're not eating six hours out of your day. When I tried intermittent fasting, I would just not eat for six hours when I woke up. And then I would, uh, you know, then you just sort of eat all the time. But I talked to a medical professional, and this was years ago. This was five years ago about, and they said, we don't know. They said that. I called my doctor because that's what they always say to do. I don't know if anybody ever does it, but they always say when you're starting a new exercise routine, you go into the gym, you go online or whatever. I don't think YouTube videos really have that, but a lot of those are kind of unregulated, irregulated, unregulated. And, um, and and they always say like consult your doctor if you're going to start a new workout, which is kind of like, okay, you don't want me to die. Thank you. Sign in the hotel gym. I'm working out. Thank you for caring about my life right now. Um, but I'm not going to, it's kind of hard. I could go to a walk-in place, but I'm not going to go. It's kind of hard to go to the doctor's office in a different town and be like, what, what's the problem? Well, my hotel gym told me to talk to you before I did the push-up thing where it's attached to other things because it said that I must consult a physician before trying a new exercise. Also, while we're at it, do you mind coming and watching me swim? Because I'm not supposed to swim by myself. I'm not saying that those are bad advice. I think you should before you start a new exercise routine. I don't know. Talk to a doctor. Who know? But swimming, what? I'm by my. I don't. If I'm staying at a hotel and the pool is open and no one's in the pool, I'm sure. I think I travel a lot for work. I'm a stand-up comedian. Not this month, really. I mean, I'm still a comedian. You, I mean, if you're listening to the podcast so far, you might be like, "Well, when when does the com when does the comedian show up?" 
Um, this is the opener. I'm the opener. Now the openers have the toughest job because they got to warm me up. Um, no, this is, there's going to be one guy, one person on the podcast. I don't know why I said person. I feel like I changed a person because I was like, well, I don't want to put myself, uh, put that person in uh, like a, a gender situation. But I, I am a, I'm a guy and it's okay if I say that. And it's weird that I, I was concerned about that. Um, but anyway, I feel like that uh, I, I don't know. I've never consulted a physician about a workout before I did it a bunch of times, many, many times. I've had pain in this area, which if you're not watching the video is like the heart. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in my 20s. I'm not in my 20s anymore. But at the time I was, I was like, that's fine. Okay. All right. We have a little, we're in a new location. If you haven't noticed by my exuberance, my exuberance and the glow in my eyes and the freedom. So normally I record in an apartment building after my kid goes to sleep and I'm concerned. Yeah, I don't know if you've been able to tell from the last um, other podcasts, but I, I feel a concern. There's a weight of responsibility. Uh, I, I used to live above a guy and his person who lived with him, his wife, she was a woman, I'm sure, uh, a wife. And um, the, the whole gender, I'm very respectful. I honor what, but I, it's, so here's, I feel like, um, I'm not going to talk about that. No, <laughs> I will, but I want to go back. I used to live with somebody who got upset about, I'm going to put it in the notes so I talk about it. Um, I, I am above a man, I was above a man in an apartment building that's a, the uh, second, a different floor than him. I'm not going to give you my personal information. And I already, s okay. Well, no one knows my credit card number, zip code, password. Hmm. What now? Internet. Um, I met someone recently and uh, their middle, they told me their middle name for some reason that I, I won't get, but I found out their middle name. And it was a very long Hawaiian middle name. And I was like, that's, that's going to be my internet password from now on for all things. Cause that way I think it's funny to learn someone's very complicated middle name. And also it's funny to take someone else's personal information as your password. Cause they're not going to know people are going to be looking for my middle, but it's, you know, we're, we're all, so, um, I used to live above a guy and he would get upset about the noise in the park. Never complain about the podcast, but I, I think he might've, not been living there anymore by the time I started the podcast. He might have enjoyed it. You know, he might be like, finally, entertainment. You know, he got upset because I was walking. He got up. If, if you live in an apartment building, um, you know that sometimes you hear people walking and he didn't like it. And I do, I do get it. Like when they complained, I didn't know I was doing it at the time. I wasn't like, I'm going to walk anyway. I was, I, I had the AirPods in, the headphones. And so, and I, I, I have a kid. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. I have a kid that I get to sleep. And um, and I just do a podcast headwords now. But usually when I'm working, I'm not working right. This is work, but it's not like I'm living off. It, but I'm, li I'm living. But I'm in a basement currently. But that's this is a vacation, not the basement part. But I'm at my parents' house. Um, and, uh, and, and so I, um, I, he would get upset and... And I would, after they, the, like the building manager would call me the next day and be like, Hey, and, and they'd be like, I'd be like, Oh yeah, I guess I was walking a lot with headphones. And when, when I put my headphones on, I don't know if you're like this, but when I put my headphones on, it's just like, have you ever seen baby driver? Don't sometimes I say one time I said, stop watching. Did you watch Chad Daniels special on Netflix? Very, very funny comedian. I, I'm not saying I haven't watched it because, uh, I don't want to watch it i just haven't because you know i'm a dad and um i've been on vacation and you're, the time for that stuff isn't there um but watch it you don't have to stop this to go watch baby driver because i don't even know where it is i don't even know where you can find baby driver right now hey <laughs> almost tried to talk to my computer but that could just throw everything off um but in baby driver uh the the main character is not a baby interestingly enough fully grown driver but he's he's a young for the criminal world and um and he listens to music like all the time and uh it really got me i really like doing i like listening to whatever i'm listening to 
And so when I'm listening to stuff, sometimes I forget where I am. And uh, I'm not conscious about using my core to walk appropriately in an apartment way when it's after, you know, 1 or 2 or 3 a.m. And so I'm just like moving around, packing stuff, and then they get upset and uh, <coughs> and then they move out. And now there's someone new living below me and I don't know if I'm uh, if I'm being a good person that lives above me or if they're just like too polite or too whatever to tell me whether I'm I'm I, I'm going to bed earlier and also when I walk I put down a mat and I don't listen to headphones as much and even if I do listen to headphones I'm just very conscious about not tiptoeing but not stepping hardly stepping in a heavy manner I'm trying to step in a light manner I'm just trying to do my best for the world sleepers that's what I call the people that listen to the podcast, the sleepers. Thank you for listening, sleepers, and new sleepers. And if you're listening and you don't want to be a sleeper, you don't have to be. Sleeper is a term that came up because it's called, I just got my kid to sleep, the podcast. And um, I did. I swear I did. I could show you a picture, right? Well, I, I don't know how I would even do that. All my devices are being used right now. All my devices. I don't have any way, but he's asleep, and I just got him to sleep. And so sleeper also is a term for like a sports team that's really good that no one believes in. And I don't think that that applies to people listening. I mean, I think everyone listening is very good. Um, but I imagine people believe in you too. But I like it. Um, but about, 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 about. So I'm in my apartment usually and I'm, I don't want anybody to move out. One time I lived in an apartment and there was a couple that lived below me. And, uh, and they moved out within a couple months and and they didn't ever complain but i think it was because it was too loud i don't i feel like i'm a good person and nice but i don't i wouldn't want to live below me i guess i'm but i'm very good now so maybe maybe i'm i'm lighter on my feet now anyway and i would make eye contact with the couple and say hi when i saw them and they were never like super nice they weren't mean but they were like i always felt like they were just kind of introverted but i think they were just like we never sleep because of you but we can't tell I don't know what the right balance of that is. Like I've had neighbors who get really upset and scream and pound through the walls. And I don't think that's right. And then I've had ones that don't say anything and then move out. And I don't think that's right. I think the most appropriate thing is to like, just tell the building manager and then they tell you. And then you're like, Oh yeah, I won't do that. Um, this isn't the episode where we find out Michael's the best person ever. I, I am, I'm not purposely causing pain in everyone's life, but I, I definitely have. And I try to be, I, I think I'm doing better. I think I am. If if you've ever lived below me, and uh, I guess I guess you wouldn't know now how I am now, but uh, just know that I've changed. I've tried, <laughs> um, but I'm in a house now. My uh, my son and I, Jack, um, came to uh, on vacation. My parents had their fiftieth wedding anniversary. Can you believe it? Five five zero five fiftieth wedding anniversary. 50 years ago, 50 years ago, my parents got married and, uh, and they, uh, I always think it's weird when people are like, you know, you made, like, I think in my mind when people get married, the only way they wouldn't make it to 50 is if they're dead. Um, and my parents, you know, they could be, but they're alive for sure. Everyone's had health stuff, but they're very healthy, I think. Um, and I'm very happy that they made it, but it does sound like a long time. I mean, I'm not in a place where I'm married that long or ever, but to be married 50 years, I have to be like, I'd be like really old. My parents got married pretty young. Um, so, and then they waited to bring children into their life a little bit because I think that they, they always said that babies are a gift from God and that, you know, whenever God gives them to you, that's when you get, but I think they really enjoyed their lives before kids because they refer to that time as like before children. And like they have it, they when they've spoken about it in the past, it's demarcated by the term before children. I don't know if they say BC, but it's like before children, like when we were happy. <laughs> I think we're all happy with kid for sure. I I've realized that definitely being a dad uh, of my son, and then the times when um when I'm not around, if I'm on the road or whatever, I I definitely feel the relief of being on the being at work and on the road and not having to be a dad but i also miss the not the, only the struggle but the fun parts too and so um but there's definitely like it's so funny to imagine 
not being a parent uh, versus being a parent. Like, I feel like it's two totally different out views of the world. You know, I, I feel like it being a parent is like if you if you weren't a parent, it'd be like if, if you just went about your day. But every five minutes you had to look around and be like, did I lose a thing that I'm going to jail for now? Like, I feel like that's that's what it would be like. Did I feed the thing that I'm supposed to go thing? I shouldn't say thing. Jack doesn't eat three meals. That's not new. He here's the thing. I always uh, when he was a baby and growing, he would always get we'd always sit down for three meals and, um, you know, he eats what he eats. But now I've given up a little bit like we do breakfast for sure. And we do dinner, definitely. And then sometimes we do second dinner. Oh, yeah. So the noise is in my parents' basement. We do second dinner. Um, and lunch has always kind of been up in the air. You know, like today we went to the pool and he had uh, parts of my pretzel. He didn't say he wanted a pretzel, but he had parts of my pretzel that he complained that there was salt on it. He complained that there was salt on the pretzel, on my pretzel that he was going to eat. But he had that, and he had a bag of chips, and he had a SpongeBob ice cream thing, which that's not a lunch. I know that, but that was what he filled up on. And then dinner was like healthy for the most part. Um, but I don't, I don't know how parents do three meals. When they're responsible for all three. Like, I feel like if school, when he was in school, they gave him, like, breakfast and lunch and the snack. And I could handle dinner, you know. Or uh, or I could do breakfast and dinner. But getting that lunch in there, it's like, first off, he wakes up and doesn't want to eat right away. And so if I do breakfast then, he's just not going to eat. And then by the time we eat, we're got to go do something. And then we're out doing something. And it's like, I think I just really got to bring food with me. Thanks for working through with that, through that with me. Anyway, my parents are married 50 years, and we came because we they uh they they sc- <laughs> I as the child I'm a middle child um of three, and from my, from my experience, what I've seen, if your parents have a big anniversary, it's the oldest child's responsibility to schedule it all, and uh, so I don't feel like I feel like anything I did to help is just bonus, you know, but it ended up being that um. My parents had an idea very specific of what they wanted specifically. And so we just all kind of showed up. But I bought cake because I wanted cake. I didn't pitch it that way. I wasn't like, hey, mom and dad, I want cake. So I bought cake. It was more like um, I was like, hey, do you guys have dessert planned? And they were like, no, but the restaurant set. And I was like, why? Uh, I just I got cake. And they're like, oh, that's so nice. I'm like, yeah. It, and it, I even put then I had them put happy 50th anniversary. Well, it was like two different cakes because if you come to a party that I'm involved in planning, there's going to be cake for you. If there's cake for one person, I'm going to make sure there's more than enough cake for everybody. That's just because I, I don't want to go to a party where there's cake and I have to feel like you got to pull back a little bit on the cake. I feel like people pull back enough anyway from their own reasoning. So just get get more than enough cake. Assume everyone's going to have cake. Even if there's people in your life who have given up cake, you don't know what that day is going to be for them. They might come being like, ah, today's the day. And then you don't get cake because they don't get cake. And then they don't get cake. Get them cake. Anyway, 50 years. 50 year, I haven't done anything for 50 years. Because I haven't been alive for 50 years. But I, uh, I've been to a 50th anniversary. It was really fun. It's kind of like we got to go to the wedding again. But way less people, from what I've heard, were invited. Way less 70s themes. And, uh, and the people getting married, um, I just felt like I've never been to a wedding where I watched the couple, you know, we, they, did, they got like a blessing from a priest at church and stuff. I've never been to a wedding where I've watched that happen where there are vows and things and then been like, oh, yeah, I'm going to use their washer dryer later. Like, I don't – it was really interesting to be, like, that uh, close to the people that were – like, I, my brother has been – my brothers have been married. Um, 
but I kind of feel like, and maybe it's a man thing, but I feel like, well, they're going to go off, you know, and do their own thing. But like seeing my parents do their sort of renewal of their vows, it was just like, oh, I'm so happy for this person that they found this person again that they were already with. And also, I'm so glad they're uh, they're providing meals on my trip here. Like, it's it's interesting. Anyway, it was very fun. They had a rule that there were no presents. That was their rule. And when someone says that to me, I don't get presents. Everybody showed up with presents, and uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what to do because. I get that people say no presents because they might have a lot of stuff already or they don't want people to feel like they have to get anything. But I also feel like other people are like, well, we're getting them this thing. And it just turned out that everybody, every single person that went had their name on a card or a gift. And, uh, and I didn't. And I feel like that's the other benefit of being the child because I'm like, well, they know. I got the cakes, right? We're spitting out. Um, so we're in the basement. We got a... Uh, Instead of on this on this show, we don't have a band, but we do have air conditioning ducts that are going to be blowing some air. Yesterday, we had a beeping coming from that closet door that I stopped. I, I pressed a reset button on something to do with the sump pump, and uh, the beeping stopped. I don't know if it, fixed, if it fixed the problem. I'm just remembering now that I should probably tell my dad. So, Dad, if you're listening to the podcast, I pressed a button that made a beeping stop. And I don't know, I don't think that fixed it, but I don't know if the beeping was a problem or if that was just like, just so you know, there's a beeping going on. So, there we go. Now we can start the podcast. I just got my kid to sleep. Thank you for being here. This is episode 20, everybody. Two, two dozen episodes minus four. Um, this is almost the whole season of a classic network sitcom that we have shot and produced and uh you know it's not 50 years of it but it feels feels like an accomplishment two tens that's when i'm i'm filming it and online yesterday um i posted some video a video a reels a reels on instagram if you're on the social media and you're listening to this i do post reels at michael palisak i feel like you wouldn't know about this if you didn't know about that but if you haven't yet And you're like, oh, I love listening to this podcast, but I wish that I had little snippets every day of his life. Um, Then that's your place to go at Michael Palasak, P-A-L-A-S-C-A-K. Do I still have to scream if the thing stops blowing the thing? It's not really. I don't know if it's air ducts or what, but it's very cool down here, which is nice. It is a uh, finished basement, but I wouldn't. No one lives down. I never lived down here. Like I lived with my parents for a long time and people are like, oh, you live in your parents' basement? Like, no, no, I was on the second floor and uh, I would have lived down here. It's much cooler. But anyway, I've already gotten quieter. So yeah, what was it? T- 20 episodes. Oh, so I've been post Instagram at Michael Palasak, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-P-A-L-A-S-C-A-K. That is... That C is there because uh, that's the way it, my name is spelled. And some of my family members have changed it. Not like not like first cousins or anything. They dropped the C. Um, but I, I keep it because uh, I that way I really know if people know. I really know if people know. And it's Palisac. That's how you say it. Um, some people don't know that, which is fine. I don't expect anybody to know it. But it is weird when uh, someone, uh, <laughs> um, anyway, doesn't know it. But I'm a comedian. You got to say my name before I go on stage. So sometimes it's weird if they don't know how to say it, but they think they do and they say it wrong. And I don't know if you've ever had this happen. Have you ever been introduced to over 100 people or maybe like, a, okay, 50 to 75, 50 and the, the everyone's supposed to applaud for you and everyone's there to s- and people there might know your name maybe not everyone but some people know your they might 
and then the person who's hosting the show who worked with you before and heard another host say your name, even though it was a long time ago, and then they sought you out on the internet and asked you multiple times to open for you again, and you were like, listen, I am not that comedian that in this point in my life that like I'm not Tom Segura I'm not Nate Bargat I'm not just like bringing a crew you know I show up and whoever the club puts up I put up I, that's awesome I was always like you reach out to the club so they reached out to the club and then they got the hosting job which in comedy is the intro level position usually like this is your chance this is your shot to warm up the crowd to destroy to do the best you can but also to get the announcements right get the and then say their name that's really the main thing you have to do is say the other comedian's name like even if your jokes don't work but if you say the comedian's name and everyone applauds like no one's going to even really notice and um this person who had like reached out multiple times to try to do shows with me um i they said my name and they said it and incorrectly and uh palaskak i think is how they said it which i'm not judging like i know that that's how it looks and i wasn't i didn't feel any anger or hatred or resentment even now as i talk about it i say i try to say it with a jolly attitude because i think it's more ironic that uh that someone's job to say it who pursued this job and they didn't say it and it's not fair we've all made mistakes but it is it is interesting. They said it wrong, and then I have to go on stage and either not address it, which I used to never address it because people weren't coming to necessarily see me. They were just sort of there, but I knew that some people were there to see me, so then I had to address it, and then that's always just like, oh, wow. Well, the person who works here doesn't know his name. How good can this show be? And so you're, Which is fun to come out of that hole, but it's not ideal, I guess. But it's kind of on me. I could make my name easier. Anybody can change your name. Anyway, that's that part. I haven't done a stand-up lately. July has been uh, mostly just being home and 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 spending time. But I'm going to go out in August more, which I'm really looking forward to. I will be in uh, Buffalo, New York and Syracuse, New York. We used to live in Buffalo when I was a young, young child when my parents would put me to sleep and then do their podcasts. And they'd be like, this kid... My parents were so good at getting me to go to sleep. I don't know about sleep, but they definitely put me to bed. I remember in the summer, like, there would be sunlight coming in through our window. Like, not forget dinner when it was light outside. We were in bed when it was light outside. Like, I don't know what time it was, but it was a hard... There were times where it was light out and we were in bed. And there were times, I remember, where we were in bed already... When my older brother had friends from the neighborhood, when I mean, he, we, he was probably like, if I was uh, six, he was like nine or ten. Uh, they were knocking on our door to come play outside, and we were already in bed to go to sleep. And and we didn't even question it. I mean, I think there was like probably some pushback at, pushback at some point. But I think at some point as a kid, you're just like, well, this is what we're doing. And and that's what, that's what my parents said. We were like... We were out. We were asleep. I'm sure we were waking up really early. So I think that's there's not necessarily a benefit when you don't have something in the morning to go into bed early, except it keeps you on the schedule for school, I guess. Um, so that that's a thing. Uh, but yeah, we live in. We, I get to go back to Buffalo and Syracuse, New York, and Toronto, and then like uh, Peoria, Illinois, and Waukesha, Wisconsin. These are all August August cities. I usually mention those at the end. Um, but it just seemed like a natural place. Actually, I haven't mentioned those in a while. Also, I might have a show, Wilmington, Delaware, but we haven't really sold one ticket. It's really weird when when you go into a town. I w- I, I'm very happy that one person bought a ticket. Well, not like I'd love for more people to buy tickets. But, as which by the way, uh, if you bought a ticket for a show and it's been canceled, and you're like, why did you cancel? I'm not, bi- I've never big timed anyone. I've never been like, I'm not going. It's always because. Uh, well, sometimes you get sick in this day and age and you can't go out and do the show. Um, or the only, uh, like a small amount of people bought tickets and the club is going to cancel it because they have to, or, or like the flight is more money than it would be to come do the show. And, um, and so, yeah, sometimes you just need to get like a hundred people there. Um, so hopefully we're going to start out August and just after that Wilmington one, which I mean, one person is i'm not 
I don't know. I would, I'll do a show for a small amount. I've done some really fun shows. I did a show in Chicago where there was like, uh, our flight got diverted to Milwaukee because there was so much snow coming down. And I had to rent a car in Milwaukee to drive to do the Lincoln Lodge in Chicago, which if you've never driven a rental car in a snowstorm, it's pretty invigorating because you know that if you get stuck, you can just walk away from that thing and come back later. You know, like if it's my car, and we run off the road. Ah, this is a problem. If it's a rental car, it's like, well, I, yeah, I didn't get insurance, but like I'm going to the show. Um, but I got to the show after the snowstorm and there were probably like seven people there. And uh, they were the best seven people because they were so excited that they were that we were there, that I was there and the show was happening. I think it was just that there was anything to do at all. Um, so I, I, I will do any show, every show, but sometimes it just doesn't work. So I would encourage people if they would like to see a live performance and I'm sure um, that I'll make it to your town, then uh, get your tickets as soon as you can. And, uh, and don't buy tickets from anywhere except links from my website or like the actual venues website because there's a lot of resellers out there and I'm not selling out anywhere. There is nothing. I mean, like if I'm in your city and I'm on a Saturday, you should get your tickets ahead of time. But like I, I, there's no reason to buy resale tickets ever, ever. Cause also they probably don't work and people are just ripping people off. So buy them off of the original comedy club website theater or the links are all on my website and those are all the right ones um so that's that it is it is summer still i know that uh school's gonna start again soon um unless you have a child that's in camp and it's really school and they're five i'm talking about myself my son is five years old and he um his preschool in the summer they have a thing called camp which it's the same hours as the preschool but uh they call it camp and they still learn stuff but they call it camp and they still are inside and outside about the same amount of time but they call it camp and i think it's really just you know so parents can keep working or whatever um but i knew i was gonna be off all of july i was off most of i was like i'm gonna be off most of july we can save money and i can just spend time with my son all the time and so i emailed the school i talked to my son's mom about it and she's like it's up to you or whatever and so i emailed the school i was like we're out you know thank you for everything we're out we had a good run this has been great um you know, I have trouble with change. I'm sure everybody does at some some level, but this is the end. And they're very nice. And that was it. And then all of a sudden, I got this big thing of like, uh, I got a call. And like his mom was like, oh, Jack's crying. The whole school's sad. Everyone's sad because it's like a really small class of like, I don't know, 10 kids or whatever. And they've known each other for a couple of years. And they're all like, and, and the teacher's like, oh, no, he's going away. And blah, blah, blah. and so I was like, okay, fine, 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 fine. Well, well you can go in July and then I can, uh, you know, keep doing my podcast and, you know, staying up all night and then sleeping during the day or whatever. So I did that. I signed him up for July and then he would, we, I would wake him up for, for a camp or whatever, or, or he'd be like, I don't want to go to school. I'm like, no, we talked to, I asked you, if you want to do this and you said yes. And so now we're going and um, that there was no really point to that. Um, but there has been other fun things that have not been uh, as um, regulated as camp. Like we went, we went to uh, for, for the 4th of July. I don't know if I, I don't think I mentioned this story. I wanted to at some point for the 4th of July, I really wanted to go to fireworks because um, Jack is not afraid of them right now. And sometimes it's a challenge as a parent to find things that are entertaining to you that don't scare your child. Like we went to go see the Garfield movie, uh, which I enjoyed. Yeah, it was his choice. Jack said he wanted to go see it. And then I find out later that he just wanted to get like an icy or a slushy, whichever one that you want to get referred to as. That's what it was. And and we get there, we watch some of the movie and then it gets to the part right before act three for all those screenwriters out there right before things really like turn around to be a good happy ending that moment where it looks like it's the worst thing is going to happen and he's like we gotta go it's too scary and i'm just like i get it i get it every movie is gonna have that moment that that creates this tension that is scary right maybe like on some levels ones that are for younger kids like i loved wally i don't feel like wally had a moment where um where it was like super scary it was like a general scary and then like this fun kind of like thrill ride um 
but there was a moment and he was like oh, and, I, I, and we laughed we laughed but i i was like oh he just wanted a slushy and now i don't get to see now now for me i know for him it's out of his mind now he's out of garfield the scary part's over but for me i'm like well i don't know how it ended and uh for me i'm still sitting in the place of ah this what's gonna happen to garfield and his dad like i don't know how they're gonna be saved and um and i'm still thinking about it and it's been over a month and I, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to handle Like, I can't, I'm not going to like search for the ending online. I don't, I just, uh, so anyways, we, he wanted to go to fireworks. And I'm like, let's, yeah, let's do a thing that you're not afraid of. And then I, I grew up in a small town. The, the city park had fireworks and you just go there and you watch them. And even in like the suburbs where my, around where my parents live, they just have fireworks in the park and you go watch them. Uh, but we were going to be in LA and I, I looked in the newspaper I still get a newspaper. I don't know if I talked about that. I like getting a newspaper because when Jack was really little, kid, little babies, you know, they love reaching for your phone because they realize that's where you're like where your head is a lot of the time, I think. So they're like, well, that's where your attention is. I want that. And so I found that if I got a newspaper, um, I could like read it around my baby and they'd be like, yeah, I don't want I don't want to read right now. You know, like. Like, if I have my phone out, they're like, I want that. But if I have a newspaper out, they're just like, okay, that's... And then we would read comics together, and um, I just liked having a newspaper. So, the only thing weird about having a newspaper... Here's the weird thing about having a newspaper, is that I'll read a thing that I like, and I don't know how to share it with anybody. Like, you read, I'm so used to, on the internet, being like, I like this, re-whatever, repost, retweet, re-x, is that what they call it? Re-whatever... The claps, claps, yay, emoji, smiley emoji, thumbs up, a hug, hug. But in the newspaper, I just had to be in my apartment being like, I like that. Like, I don't know how to, what do I do? Cut it out and set it over the recycling in a very obvious way. Like, look at it, you know? I don't know. I don't know how to share the things I like in a newspaper. I remember when I first moved into my apartment building, um, this is like my second apartment as a as a parent and um i i was looking at the re- i was taking recycling out it's really hard to recycle in my apartment as a parent it's almost like if you don't have kids you can walk out of your house any whatever you want but when you're a parent you're not really i don't know i don't know what the rules are i know you're not supposed to like leave your kid alone for sure but is my garage consider part of my apartment like sometimes I'm like well is it like a big house and if he's asleep can i walk out i try not to even throw out the garbage when when he's asleep but i definitely to to throw out the garbage you just walk down the hall and there's a chute and you can throw it down the chute and then that's fine but to take out the recycling you have to go all the way down to the like garage basement area and then there's two recycling bins and on each like part of the garage and then you have to hope that they're not full and then you got to pull it out a little bit and then push it open and then throw it in there it's just like it's just like i i don't i don't care as much about recycling when it's hard um i feel like also being a parent kind of affects that viewpoint because before i was a parent i felt like i was recycling to make the earth last longer for the future and now that i've made a future a future being i kind of feel like it's their problem like that sounds very uh i don't know (laughs) i don't think it's think it's their problem but part of me does feel like listen we figured out all this other cool technology you figure out how to turn garbage into driving cars right like why do we have to do everything you know and it's it's also like the things i'm recycling i probably shouldn't be buying anyway like plastic bottles i shouldn't even own those so i don't know i can't uh it's harder to recycle my apartment building because there's so many steps to it and as a parent sometimes like my kid doesn't have shoes on we're getting ready to go to bed i'm like oh, i got this recycle so i put him in an arm and then i'm carrying in you know a five-year-old down the stairs with the recycling and it's just like they just don't make it easy and uh and so i don't care as much anyway when we lived in the suburbs 
Well, when there was fireworks that you could go to and sit in a park and watch. And then I looked at my newspaper to find out all the cool places to watch fireworks. And maybe it was just because it was like the people that paid money for ads. But in the article, it just listed like a couple of places where there was going to be like music before. And then Universal Studios, which is as which is like in, you know, California, Los Angeles. And so we're like, all right, we'll go to Universal Studios because we had never been before. And they have a wife, but it, my son had and they have a Super Mario World. Super Nintendo World, which it's weird. It is called Super Nintendo World, which makes me wonder for all the video game people, like, is there going to be other video games involved in Super Nintendo World? Um, or they just think it'd be better than Super Mario World? Um, or maybe Super Mario World was already taken from the game. Anyway, we get there. It's very fun. We see the fireworks. It was interesting, though, because, like, they have a, they have a Mario Kart ride there, which is one of the coolest things I've ever been on in my entire uh, riding riding existence and i was a little worried because in universal studios it's not like a huge theme park like the one in florida is pretty big the one in california it's kind of restricted because there's an actual studio there and it's kind of like on a hill so i knew that the lines might be long especially on the fourth of july and but jack really wanted to go on the mario kart ride so we went and it was like two and a half hour wait and i was worried about jack um but then i realized so we went on the ride and the second we got off, he's like, let's go again. I realized that for a child, three hour, two and a half, three hours is the same as like five minutes. To, like we've driven 10 minutes to a playground. He's like, dad, why is it taking us so long? But like we wait in line for two and a half hours. He's like, let's go again. Because I feel like any waiting is too long for a kid. So there's no measure. Like as an adult, you wait for two hours for a ride. You're like, well, we're going to do something else. But as a kid, you're like, well, that was it all sucks. So let's just do this. Plus, I have somebody that's going to carry me if I make them. The line for Mario Kart is is interesting because it doesn't all... It's not like constantly moving. So there's time... I found out the second waiting of three hours to sit down on the ground and like just... You can almost... I took little tiny naps with how long it took for them to move to the next part. And it was very fun. The ride is super cool. If you're going to go on the ride, just know not there's no unlimited shells. It's like you're playing Mario Kart, but you're in Mario Kart, and you get to press a button to shoot out shells. And once you're out of shells, you got to hit another thing to get more shells. So don't just go. It's not like uh, for the, all the theme park. It's not like Midway Mania toys. It's like it's not like a thing where you just press, 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 and win. You gotta you gotta aim and save your shells if you're gonna take anything from this today's episode. That would be it. So so we're in the line the second time. And uh, it's just Jack, just Jack and me enjoying our independence and Independence Day. And um, <coughs> we get up to like we're probably like halfway through the line and uh, Jack is five, you know, and uh, we didn't go to the bathroom before. So we had to go to the bathroom. And um, luckily there were there were we would kind of become friends with the people that were standing around us. Um, there was one group of like people that were probably in their twenties that loved soccer. Uh, they called it football cause they're from, I think Ecuador. And we started talking about how I had gone to the Ecuador football game in, uh, Las Vegas when I was working there. And so anyway, they know what Jack's going through. And so they're like, we'll hold your place in line. It's fine. And throughout the whole line waiting thing, we had seen people sort of be like, I gotta go up there. I gotta go up there, which is really interesting that that everyone was okay with it, you know? Cuz like I feel like in that situation where you're waiting 3 hours to ride a ride, if people are going to lie for a long time, like <clears throat> I don't think it's possible. Cuz at some point you're going to have to stop. And then you're going to have to look at the people around you and then the people around you are going to know, "Oh, they don't know those people." So the line kind of regulates itself. Like if people pass you in the line and they're not going to go see friends or family because they had to go to the bathroom or whatever, then it's like at some point they're going to be there and people are going to be like, at least that's the way I think it would work. But anyways, we go to the bathroom and then we found like a way out of the place that was, it said emergency exit only, but it didn't say the alarm would go off. So I was like, let's see what happens. And the alarm didn't go off and we exited one way, went to the bathroom and then came back up and, uh, and there's a line at Universal Studios for people that pay like a lot more money. And um, and I, I don't know if I had a lot, a lot, a lot of money, I think it would be fun. But also, I really like the idea of making my son wait in line um, because as a parent, I'm not really good at making him suffer uh, or rough it. You know, like 
I, I heard Jerry Seinfeld in an interview recently. I feel like on when he was promoting that movie uh, on Frosted, um, which I, I enjoyed, um, that he was saying as a parent, you have to like not. Uh, there's like four P's. You don't want to. You don't want to. Uh, um, problem solve for your child you don't want to just do things to like please your child like give them pleasure or like control the situation so they're just happy all the time and then there were two others um that i don't and i was like oh i you know i do all that so i was so i was like waiting in line that's a good way to just be like this is what we're doing and save money um so we're, we use the bathroom we go up the line where people that paid extra are and i'm just like hey we went to the, we had to go to the bathroom. It's like a three hour wait. You know what are we got? He's five. This is a theme park. It's it's a Nintendo. It's for children. Children don't have the bladders for three hours all the time, and we're not always thinking. So, so they're like, well, what's who are you aligned with? They have to text us a picture where they are, and I'm like, okay, that seems weird. That like I just have to have friends now. I didn't get their cell phone number, and even if I knew the rule, I think it'd be weird to be like, we're gonna go to the bathroom. Can I have your phone number now so you can text us? I mean, I think they would understand, but I didn't, uh, the ultimate thing, the, the most important thing, I didn't know that I had to do that. So I was like, well, I don't have their number. We we're just here, you know? Um, but I, he did go to the bathroom and, and, uh, and he did have to go. So I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure there's cameras. You could probably see us leaving. And, <clears throat> and uh, since I had seen people skip the line or like walk through, I was like, I'll just, I'll just go through this way. I'll just walk past people. And uh, I was talking to this lady. I was like, well, is there a way to get her to go up there that's not that way? And she was like, well, you have to get a picture. And I just started working here, so I don't know what to do. And I was like, oh, it's okay. I'll just go the long way and we'll just go past people. And then this like this girl who just said she started working there, she looked at me and she's like, I don't know if I can let you do that. And it wasn't like in a threatening way, like, I don't know if I can let you do that. But it was definitely in a way of like, um, that could be against the rules. And, and there was something very... Um, very uh invigorating i use that word too much um very that felt good to know that like i could break kind of a rule but also know i was being true to a bigger rule you know like like this is a theme park ride and you don't want kids to just go to the bathroom in the line that would be a bigger problem so i think that i'm doing the right thing by going back to where we were and so i kind of skipped back past people i jumped the thing and uh we made it to where our line was and we still had to wait another hour so and it got it was really interesting because I people waiting in line mo everyone moved out of the way pretty much right away but some of the people I, I w couldn't see me so I'd be like hey we had a bathroom we had to do a bathroom break we had to do a bathroom break and I was holding Jack in my arm at the time and it was so funny because after I said it like three or four times when when we came up to another person he'd be like we had a bathroom break and I'm like yeah we had a bathroom break and he's like we had a bathroom break and and like he had picked up on on the game right away so. But overall, Mario Kart ride, amazing. Jack really believed that he was in. The way he talked about Edward, he believed that he was in Mario Kart. Like, I think he thinks now that when we play the video game, that's just like uh, like watching a football game on TV. Like, the real thing is the ride, and uh, the video game is just like some board game you get to take home and play to remind you of it. it went, and it was so fun. And, um, yeah, that was it. That was, that was that that story. So, and then we came out and we watched the fireworks, and uh, and then I found out later from a friend that the parks in LA do have fireworks that you can watch, but uh, they're harder, I guess, to find out about because they're not in the newspaper. But I guess, I guess if I was marketing something these days, I wouldn't be like, you guys cover the newspaper. We got to get the newspaper out there. All right. That sound means that the overall temperature of the house has increased to the point where my dad has set the air conditioning at a level that is appropriate for now. My dad does not like setting air conditioning at a low level. And it's kind of unfair because their room is very cool all the time and my room gets the sun. Here's something. How come if you have a house or an apartment or a room and it gets hit by the sun during the day, and then it cools off at, I got sneeze. <laughs> How come it's even hotter at night when it's the sun isn't out anymore? It's like my room absorbed the sun, and now it's like dark out, but it's hot still, maybe more hot. And if 
if that's so easy to do, how come we can't harness that energy to like power cars and recycle things so we don't have to worry about recycling all the time, right? That's my message. There's technology out there. Harness this power. If you've ever had a room that faced the sun with the window, you know how it can heat up and then just hold it all in. Anyway, thank you for listening. On this episode, we covered the Universal Studios Mario Kart ride and the 4th of July fireworks that were really fun. We also talked about uh, being in a basement and doing a podcast versus being in an apartment building. And I'm sure there's other things that I've already forgotten. But I appreciate it. Episode 20. Jack was in bed before midnight in a different time zone. The end.